Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are talking about the worship experience, and I'm excited about this particular message because I am one of those that has been accused of being a holy roller, okay? One of those people who lifts up her hands in the service, and you just might hear me say things like, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise be to God. Well, today I'm going to give you a glimpse into the personal worship experience, not just for myself, but also for those that I've encountered over the years. We're talking about bona fide worshipers, not actors, not people looking for attention. But we're talking about when that Holy Spirit moves during service and how you are taken by the spirit, the tears fall down your face. You are saying words that maybe people know or people don't know. You may even bow down before the Lord. You may lie prostrate before the Lord. You may sing loudly or you may even do a dance or two, but you feel so moved in your spirit that you can't just sit there. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. You can't just sit there because there is something on the inside that says we need to get this stuff off of us. We are not going to leave this place the same way we came in. The minister said to press in that there's spiritual breakthrough. And so I'm not leaving this place until I feel better about my situation. Some of you all, that's why you're going to church because you are tired of living a lie. Some of you others are going to church because you are seeking the Lord around like-minded believers because you know you can't do it all by yourself. Some of you others are going to church to just feel rejuvenated and uplifted after a long week of having to deal with this trial and that one. And then some of you others are just curious. And even though you're not 100 percent sold out for Christ, at least you're somewhere other than where you've been. Come on. You're allowing that light to shine on those dark times, dark moments, dark memories and dark whatever else that you got going on. The worship experience is something like none other. It's not like sitting down talking right to someone who says, well, just be encouraged. God is with you. You'll be all right. I love you. You know, no, uh, -uh. (laughs) sometimes that's just not good enough. The worship experience is not like, uh, you know, eating and drinking and being merry during a holiday celebration or during a football game or basketball game. Right. It's not about, uh, you know, a lot of hollering and and screaming and yelling over uh, somebody running down a field or court. Right. No, there's a bunch of hollering and screaming and yelling in some of these worship experiences. That's about Jesus. Jesus, I just need you right now. Jesus, I'm just tired of all of this drama that I'm going through. Jesus, I need for you to heal me. Jesus, I'm tired of being all alone. Jesus, I need for you to just bring me up out of this stuff that I'm going through. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody right now needs to put their hands up and just press in right now because see, I'm feeling in the spiritual realm that somebody is looking for something a bit different, a little bit different than the routine. You see the relationship routine, the workplace routine, the church routine, visiting family members, helping friends routine, boring. Somebody says <laughs> you want you want a little excitement in your life. I don't care if you're young or old. You want a little excitement in your life. Put your hands up right now. I dare you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pause this audio and just say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need you. I need an uplift. I need help. And then you just list all of these things. I'm telling you before long, you're going to start feeling something in your spirit. (laughs) I'm telling you right now in the name of Jesus, if you're tired of all of the stuff that you've been going through and you've been having all sorts of feelings that are negative and you've been thinking about some ugly stuff, just start pressing in in the spiritual realm a bit. Okay.
using your voice, using your hands, standing up on your feet or remaining seated. Sometimes that's what you need. Other people, they like to sing. They like to sing during the worship experience. Sometimes the Lord will just move upon my spirit and I'm not singing sometimes in English. I'm singing in in tongues. Some of you all, if you're not familiar with tongues, uh, you might want to look that up. That's the edification of yourself, uh, a personal conversation, if you will, with the Lord. And it's in a different language. OK, just to summarize it briefly. And so, you know, it'll just it, 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 it the words will just show up. OK, the Holy Spirit will just move upon me and then the next thing I know I'm singing in in tongues or I may be singing in my English language it all depends on how God is moving me and sometimes the worship experience is to encourage others uh, I remember a time where I attended a service and I thought I was gonna uh, be worshiping for myself right like I'm talking about worshiping the Lord but worshiping for my own you know, uplift, right? Uh, uh. This time it wasn't about me and, and just spending that time with, uh, the Lord, um, you know, around other people. Mm -mm. This worship experience was about ministering to other folks. So there were ways that I was holding my hands during that service. And there were things that the Holy Spirit was moving me to do. And the next thing I know, after the service, somebody came over and touched me and said that I was watching you and, I just knew that it was time for me to stand on my feet and give praise to the Lord. OK, I didn't know that there was a visual minister, uh, uh, ministering process that was taking place. I, all I was doing was doing whatever I felt moved to do under the anointing of the almighty God. And this individual had tears in her ass. OK, and she was feeling uh, lighter and, and feeling better about whatever her circumstances was. She didn't tell me and I didn't ask, but I'm telling you, Jesus, Jesus is real. You see the vote, the folks that got issue with Jesus, the folks that got issue with religion and faith and spirituality are the folks that have yet to experience that freedom, that peace, that joy that surpasses all under all understanding while everybody else is looking at you. Right. And they're, they've got this attitude and you're feeling good. <laughs> they, they miss out on what it is that God is doing. You see, instead of looking around at what everybody else is doing and being that spectator, one should be just pressing in, uh, you know, praising the Lord, uh, wanting that spiritual renewal, that spiritual healing. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, pressing in, you are worshiping the Lord. Your mind is focused on the things of God. But if you're not reading his word and you're not listening to the ministers or the wise counselors around you, then your mind is uh, focused on money. Your mind is focused on that female or that male that you're with. The, you, you know, your mind is focused on the children and focus on work and all of this other stuff. But you see, I don't focus on in on those things. I focus in on the fact that God promised me that I was going to be blessed. I focus in on the fact that I am going through a lot, but I know that God's going to heal me. I focus on the fact that it doesn't matter that people around me are staring or looking or feeling strange or whatever. All I know is that God is with me and that God can heal them just like he's healing me. God can close their eyes just like he closed my eyes. God can move upon their spirits to focus on the things that are righteous and true, just like he did with me. You see, sometimes, yes, I'm praying for other people, but most of the time in a worship experience, I'm focused on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Come on now. Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that moves upon us to walk down that aisle or to give, you know, our uh, lives over to him. He's that one that uh, the Holy Spirit will speak. Uh, that he uses will speak to us and tell us, don't go down there. <laughs> don't talk to this one today. Um, you might want to consider uh, doing something a bit different. Um, why don't you go over there to your wife and give her a hug? Why don't you go over there to your husband and give him a kiss? You see, there's that love. There's that peace. That's, there's the fruits of the spirit at work. The worship experience is serious. And when you're going to church, take it seriously. I'm going to read something out of my three minute devotions for women. Um, this is a book that I came across at a drugstore one day. Uh, there's 180 inspirational readings for her heart. It says um, on the front cover and uh, 
It's it's just a simple uh, book, okay? You take a little bit of time each day and you read it. Uh, this is what it says about that worship experience. Exodus forty thirty four says, Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So that is what is taking place when you just hear all of these voices just praising the Lord so much. And when you feel uh, moved to tears and when all sorts of odd things are taking place around you. Some folks, they're familiar with this if they attend Pentecostal churches uh, that are serious about uh, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and allowing the Spirit to move during service, okay? So that glory of the Lord is being filled within the church, okay? Um, the uh, devotion says God wants us to enter worship with a heart prepared to actually meet him. OK, I know that that's hard for some people to wrap their head around, but just just bear with me. He wants your heart to be prepared to meet him. It's like your heart being prepared to meet someone that you've encountered over the Internet. Some of you all know what I'm talking about. So you're all excited to meet that person. Well, you need to be excited about having that quiet time as well as corporate worship with the one true God. He longs for us to come in the frame of mind where we're not just singing about him. We're truly worshiping him with every fiber of our being. He wants wholehearted participants and not spectators. So I know that for some of you all, you're curious and you're watching your back and you don't want no elbows to bump you in the head. And, and you don't want nobody stepping on your toe uh, during their uh, stomping the devil and so forth. I understand that. But at the same time, though, you need to be zeroing in on your personal worship experience and not running around or walking around looking at everybody else. Come on. And being critical. Mm, she yelling too loud. Hmm. He's stomping too much. Ooh, she going to run up and down and trip and fall. This isn't a place for gossiping and, and looking at folks and laughing and acting foolish. I tell my kids sometimes when they are caught up in, in looking at other folks, turn your head, close your eyes, look down at the floor. Okay. If you can't uh, be disciplined enough to control the laughter, because, yes, there is sometimes some funny stuff to take place, but that's not a place for you to be amusing yourself, you see. And then for those that are very immature, it's just not time for them to go to church, especially to a one that's moving like that. They need to be in a youth service. You see, and if your church doesn't have a youth service, then find one that does. Then if you got, you know, a bunch of kids that you're traveling with, because all of that sit down, be quiet, shut your mouth and all that. And the worship experience is taking place. You know, sometimes children can be a distraction and, and sometimes they're just too young to understand what is taking place. You know, so when my kids were really young, no, I did not run and rip to the church. You know, because I'm not going to interfere with other people's worship experience uh, getting on my kids. Let me train up a child right at home and then we can all head on over to the church. And the Lord, he was right there with me at home because I was talking to the children about worship and I was telling them to lift their hands up at home. OK, because they need to be trained running children over to the church and, and they're acting foolish. Mm -mm. No, honey, we've got to. Make sure that as parents, we are instructing these children and training them. OK, there's too much of that foolishness. I remember one time uh, a couple of my children were being disrespectful, running behind the pulpit. OK, after the service, it wasn't during, but it was after. And the minister cautioned them about it. And I was on it right away. Let me explain something to you. There is a time and there's a place for things. This is not the time and this is not the place. You don't run around in the church and you definitely don't go behind the pulpit. You see, so they had to understand that you're supposed to respect, you know, the things of God in the house of the Lord. Now, if you want to rip and run, you rip and run at home. You see, I mean, there are parents that don't teach their children too much of anything, you know, and then yet. They want to be blessed and they want, you know, this, that and the other. Well, God, he blessed you with children. So let's start right there. You see, training up a child. And I know some children, they don't understand why their parents get on them so much at the church, because once you get a certain age, you should just know better. OK, 
the Lord is moving upon these people and he wants them to be focused. He wants them to be, um, uh, you know, mentally, physically, and spiritually uplifted. And so for anyone who has even a little bit of understanding, at least respect that. Even if you're not into, uh, all things spiritual like that, at least respect it, sit down and be quiet and stop with the silly stuff. You see, come on now. Some folks, <laughs> some of you all, you know how it goes, right? If you are in the church, you know how it goes sometimes. And you might be the one to have to caution a few folks. You never know. Okay, um, in the devotion, it says God promises to meet with us when we come into his presence, if our hearts and minds are truly engaged. So ask the Lord, even before you get to that quiet place or in corporate worship, help me, Lord Jesus, to have my mind focused on you. Help me, Lord Jesus, uh, to have my uh, heart engaged, truly engaged during this next worship experience. Uh, he often overwhelms us with his goodness, right? I, if I want to be overwhelmed, I don't want to be overwhelmed with stress, right? So we want to be overwhelmed with his goodness, his greatness, his word, right? So think about the last time you truly engaged God, okay? Met with him in a supernatural way. Has it been a while? Okay, now if it's been a while, it's time to start focusing on being truly engaged with God during your private experience, private moment, as well as corporate worship. It's the Lord's desire that we come into his presence regularly. And this is another reason why it's a little bit uncomfortable when you attend a Saturday or Sunday service, or even if you attend a Bible study, because you're not worshiping the Lord regularly behind closed doors. So if I'm not spending the time reading his word, right, and I'm not spending the time praying, and I'm not spending the time saying things like praise be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the, this word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for waking me up again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for uh uh, this peaceful sleep that, you know, if I'm not doing that in my quiet time, then yes, it's going to be a little bit strange, a little bit uncomfortable being around people who do that. So get in the habit of doing it behind closed doors and then it will be comfortable to you when you're around other people. I've done this over the years and trust me, it works. Okay. So it's the Lord's desire that we come into his presence regularly, not in an, I have to get this over with frame of mind. OK, some folks, ah, here we go again. Let me get this over with. <sighs> here we go with this church. <sighs> you know, there's a negative attitude. Well, if you go in with a negative attitude, it isn't any wonder that the church doesn't do anything for you because I don't believe in this. I don't like this. I don't like the people, you know, very critical, very negative, very bitter. It's not going to work for you. So sometimes it's just better to stay at home until you can train up your mind, train up your body, your spirit to be positive, to be enlightened, to press in on spiritual things. People can press in on stuff dealing with the mind. They can press in on things dealing with the body. But when it comes to their spiritual spirituality or spiritual uh, renewal. They don't know anything about it and they're not interested. And so people will feel a negative vibe off of folks like this. And so they don't like to talk to you and they don't like to be around you because people like to be around folks who have a positive spirit. Even the person who is not sold out for God, if they got a positive spirit about them, people will flock around folks like that. That's why for some people, they may be ungodly and unrighteous and ugly, but they just got a positive uh, demeanor about them. Okay. And, and people tend to flock around folks like this. So a smile goes a long way. <laughs> uh, you know, being um, that nice guy, that kind girl, that goes a long way. It really does. So you might as well do it for uh, kingdom business. You might as well do it for the uh, for the Lord. Uh, it's the Lord's desire that we come into his presence regularly, not in an I have to get this over with frame of mind, but a Lord, I am so blessed to get to spend time with you attitude. OK, the minute you got that quiet time and there's nobody bothering you and talking to you and getting on your nerves and all of that. I am so grateful, Lord Jesus, to be in your presence right now. When everybody leaves that house, go around that house and just say, thank you, Jesus. I know it might seem strange at first, but just do it anyway. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this bed that I sleep on. Thank you for these clothes in my closet. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all of this technology that I have. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And do that sort of thing when you're in church too. Thank you for my eyes, for my hands, for my legs, for my, uh, you know, everything, whatever it is. You know, some women, they are cancer survivors, right? And they've lost their breasts. Okay. And something as simple as breasts. I know for some people, they will say, I mean, really? You're going to talk about breasts? Yes. I'm going to say that because some of these women, they, you know, cry about their circumstances and they lose their breasts. Thank you, Jesus, for my breasts. You see? Or what about the guy who lost his leg uh, going overseas, defending our country? Okay? Thank God for the, those two legs that you got. Or what about uh, some of those individuals who have lost their eyesight for any number of reasons? Or maybe they were born that way. And they say, Lord, if only I could see. You should be thanking the Lord for your eyesight. And then for those who have lost their eyesight, but they can hear. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my ears. Or well, what about those who lost their hearing, but they can see? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my eyes. Come on. We got something to thank Jesus about. Okay. We know man didn't create any ears. We know man didn't turn around and create any eyes. I'm talking about from birth. I'm not talking about when they start messing around in the lab and creating things later. I'm talking about from birth, from the beginning. You see? Hallelujah and praise the Lord when we meet with him, right? When we meet with God in that mindset, okay, saying things like, Lord, I'm so blessed to get to spend time with you. The shining greatness, listen to this, the shining greatness of the Lord will be revealed and his glory will fill that place. You see? And so people around you, they'll start to feel some things. Wow, you're in a good mood today. Ooh, you have a good spirit about you. Oh, you know, I like you. There's just something about you. <laughs> and you'll say to yourself, yep, I was going around here thanking the Lord and everything. There is something to it. Yes, there is. I'm telling you, test. Just test what I'm saying. Sometimes people are so busy being critical that they don't bother to test. You can test what I'm saying. Just try it. If you can shake all of that people pleasing stuff from you, because some people, the reason why they don't really enjoy their worship experience is because they're too busy people pleasing. They're too busy concerned about what people think around them. I wonder what she thinks if I start standing up here praising the Lord. She never saw me like that. Uh, I, I guess I'll just sit. I'll just sit down and just remain seated. Oh, I don't want him to see me crying. Let me just wipe these tears. Those tears are for Jesus. It's not about him. It's not about him. It's not about your mother. It's not about your sister. It's not about your uh, foolish cousin who likes to joke during service or whatever. It's about Jesus. I'm here for Jesus. I'm here for praising the Lord. I'm here for uplift. I'm here for being more positive. I want to draw near with a, with, uh, nearer to the Lord. I want to meet him. And he will. He will show himself strong spiritually. And you will feel something. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus. Somebody right now wants to press in. Somebody right now wants a worship experience. Somebody right now wants to have that peace that surpasses all understanding as well as that joy. Right now, may the Lord's spirit fall upon that individual right now who really is open to this sort of thing. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the dwelling of the, of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name. I'm a shianda mamushin gays. A presence, a presence right where they are. May the glory of God show up strong. May they receive the glory of God during their next worship experience. May the church be so moved, so changed. I'm a shianda mamushin gays. By God's Spirit. I'm a shianda mamushin gays. Thank you, Jesus. Here I am to worship, here I am, here I am to worship. Sometimes it comes through song. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, you are great, 
you do miracles so great. There is none like you. Oh, there's none like you. You are everything. You are everything to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bring healing upon the listener in mind, body, and spirit. Bring opportunity to the listener who has been waiting for so long. May blessings come. May the phone ring for those who's waiting on a phone call. May the email come for those who's waiting for the email. May the person who they've been waiting for so long to cross their doorstep, may he or she arrive. Blessings, blessings upon the listener. May that home that someone has been hoping and wishing and praying for come. In your time, though, not in man or woman's, but in your time, Jesus. May you move upon that person to get the necessary resources. Someone who needs freedom right now, may they receive the freedom, receive the release from a turbulent relationship, from a miserable job, from... A church that is no longer giving them what they need. And may all of these things that they lose be replaced with something better. Hallelujah. Or someone better. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, as always, for taking this time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please do NM Enterprise 7. And also, we do welcome donations. Blessings to you.